Hi everybody, Adam here from Audience, and today we're going to be showing you how to get your DAW set up with your ID interface. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Cubase. So first things first, we're going to need to connect our interface. I recommend doing that first. If you've got any speakers or monitors, leave the headphones unplugged for now, leave the monitors switched off whilst we do the rest. We don't want any kind of clicks and pops causing any issues down the road. So we're going to plug in, I have an ID14 here, but the process is the same with an ID4. Plug the USB-C cable into your Mac or PC. If it's a Mac, it may be a USB-C on the other end. If it's a PC, it may be USB-A, which is the larger square connection. Both should work exactly the same. If you're doing this with an ID44, you'll need to plug in the AC connection at the same time. Now, whilst it is possible to use an ID interface with some limited functionality just by plugging it straight into the computer, we highly recommend going to the Audient website and getting the latest drivers. This means that you will have maximum compatibility, full functionality, and everything that the interface can do will be available to you. So let's go to the Audient website now. Once we are at the audience.com website, we can go to the top to products, and find the link to the audio interface that we're using. In my case, the ID14. Having said that, whether you're using an ID4, 14 or 44, the drivers are the same and can be used across the entire range. Now we're on the ID14 page, we can go to download at the top right, and that will give us both the documentation, so the manual and the start guide, as well as the macOS drivers and the Windows drivers. Download the relevant one, install them through that process, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once that's installed, you may need to run the ID app at the first time, but this may come up automatically when you plug in the ID interface. The first time you do this, it will come up with the Arc Creative Hub window, where we have some fantastic software and tutorials available to you as you register your interface. I'm already a member, so I'm just going to close this window. Now I can see the ID mixer in front of me. This comes up for the ID14 and 44, but for the ID4, everything is done on the front of the interface. No mixer required. At this point, I'm going to plug in a microphone and then get that ready to use in my DAW. Now here's one I prepared earlier. This is a vocal microphone that needs 48 volt phantom power. On the front of each unit is a 48 volt switch per channel. So I'm going to turn that on, on the channel one, which is where I have this connected. On the ID4, the 48 volt control is on the rear of the unit. Once the microphone is powered, we're going to need to adjust the gain on the front of the interface until we see reasonable levels. Now on the ID14 and 44, we can see in the ID mixer now on screen that there is appropriate level coming in, if not a little much. On the ID4, we move the monitor DAW knob all the way to the left and then on the LEDs on the front of the unit, we should then be able to see the levels moving as needed. Now we have a microphone plugged in, it's time to fire up Cubase. Now, if you've not plugged in an interface before, or you've plugged in something different previously, Cubase will come up with an option for you to choose your new interface. And in this case, I'm going to choose Audient ID14. If that didn't come up, don't worry, we will go and find that ourselves in just a moment. One thing I like to do at this point is create myself a new blank project. It's something I can work with to make sure everything is set properly. So I'm going to use the default location in the launcher here, which in my case is in my music folder on the Mac, and I'm going to call this ID14, create empty. Now this may not even be using the ID interface just yet if that dialog box didn't come up. So we're going to go to studio at the top and Studio Setup. Now at the top here, the first item of business is Audio System. And then we need to choose our ACO driver. This is identical whether you're on Mac or PC. We need to drop down the list and choose our audience ID interface. In this case, the ID14. It will ask us, do you want to switch the ACO driver? In which case we say yes and switch. And that will now engage the input and output latency and the device and everything that we need for our audio production. Now, talking about latency, we need to set this 
as we need it. So underneath audio system on the left is now audience ID 14. Now, if we open this window up, we can see every input and output that is presented to us in a list. And we can also touch the control panel button. The control panel button will bring up the device settings for buffer size. This is the same Windows and Mac. And buffer size is related to latency. Now, latency is important because if you're listening to a microphone or a guitar through Cubase, then if you want to process that in any way, whether it be an EQ, a compressor, a virtual guitar amp, that is going to take a little bit of time for the computer to process. We're talking milliseconds, very short, but that can become noticeable and introduce a delay, which can be quite off-putting if this buffer is too high. We can remedy this by making the buffer size smaller. I like to use 128 samples here. You can go lower, but you may find that as your song and as your mix become more complicated, we start to run into issues of pops, clicks, dropouts, where the computer has too much work to do and is struggling to do everything in time. So we can remedy that by changing the buffer to be somewhat longer, like 512 samples or even 1024. Once that's done, we hit close. That changes our latency numbers here to reflect what we just chose. And then we can hit OK. One more thing that I feel like I need to change before we start recording is sample rate bit depth. And we'll find those on every project. This is project dependent, not general computer independent. So we go to project at the top and project setup. At the bottom on the left here, we have sample rate and bit depth. Now, bit depth is easy for me. I just leave that at 24 bits because the ID series are 24 bit interfaces. So we're getting the maximum quality from our interface into Cubase and back out again. As for the sample rate, there are a dizzying number of choices, but generally I find that most people choose either 44.1 kilohertz, which is generally accepted as the standard for CDs, or 48 kilohertz, which is generally the production format that we use for film, TV, DVD production, that kind of thing. I tend to work in 48 kilohertz because of what I do, so I'm going to choose that and hit OK. And that will then change the settings in the ID interface. From here, with our microphone plugged in, powered on, gain set, we need a channel in Cubase. So in this big blank space on the left here, we're going to right click and add an audio track. Now in this case, it's going to be a mono audio track and it's going to go out of the stereo outputs. In a second, I'll talk about the studio connections, which is more important if you have one of the interfaces with more ins and outs, like the ID14 or 44. So I'm going to hit add track, and that's going to be right here, ready to go. We chose input one, so this is now ready, and we should, if we put monitoring on, be able to see a nice little meter. So as I talk, that goes up and down. Now, if you're using one of the interfaces like the ID44, which has significantly more inputs and outputs, you may need to make sure that Cubase can see them. So at the top, we need to go to Studio and Audio Connections. Now in here, we have two tabs for inputs and outputs. On inputs, we may need to add more buses. So we click the Add Bus button. And what I like to do, if it's something like the ID44, which has many inputs, I might choose 12 inputs, all mono, and then I'm just going to call them input and that will name them appropriately. This provides me with a whole list of inputs which are then assigned respectively to the different analog or digital inputs. It's the same with the outputs, you just add as many buses as you need, name them appropriately. Something that is nice is you can name these depending on what instrument you might have plugged into them. Now at this point, you may still not hear anything, and this is where we need to talk about monitoring. I mentioned earlier that you may want to have your speakers turned off or your headphones unplugged. And at this point, we want to turn on our monitors or plug in our headphones, and then use the volume buttons and the main encoder knob on the front of the interface to get the proper levels. So I might touch the speaker button, then turn up the interface as far as I need to go, or with the headphones, same thing. Now, you may still not be able to hear anything. 
In this case, you should be able to hear something because we have input monitoring selected in Cubase. So this is what I was talking about earlier with making sure that you have some sort of monitoring. In Cubase, we would click the yellow monitor button. And then if we want to use any effects on the left, that would be inserts for EQs, compressors, any of that kind of stuff. Or alternatively, if we don't want to use that ACO buffer in that slight delay, if we want near zero latency, we can go back to the ID mixer and we can grab the fader for input one where we can see that level going and we can turn that up until the level that we want to hear is appropriate for what we want to hear on the monitors or the headphones. Do be careful of feedback. On the ID4, we don't use the ID mixer, we use a very similar approach but using a physical control on the front of the interface. The monitor mix all the way left will show us the inputs on the headphones only. On the right, DAW only will show us the audio from Cubase. If we want to go right to the middle, then we will hear an equal amount of both. If we move our knob to the left, we will hear more of the input. If we move it to the right, we will hear more of Cubase. One more thing, at this point, you may experience a phenomenon that I call ghosting, where you have the same audio source coming through twice, which means that it sounds like a kind of chorus effect or a doubling effect or kind of a hollow robot kind of effect. What's happened usually is that your DAW, in this case Cubase, is monitoring and the near zero latency monitoring is coming through the ID mixer. So we need to make a choice of which one we want to use and turn off the other one. So let's say I wanted to monitor through Cubase and not through ID. I would need to make sure that this fader on this microphone was all the way down and I would need to go back to Cubase and make sure that the monitoring icon was on. Conversely, the other way around, you would make sure that the monitoring was off in Cubase and that the fader was up in the ID mixer. And that's it. Any questions you've got, please feel free to leave a comment down in the section below or feel free to reach out to us at Audience and through our support team. Thanks everybody for watching. Good luck and have fun.